next presentation now is from uh, Lucas Avink. So Lucas Avink is the last man standing between us and cocktails, <laughs> virtual cocktails that is. Um, so Lucas is uh, Vice President of Sales. He's focused on the key accounts in the EMEA region. Um, he, uh, him and his team work with large multinationals who operate long lead supply chains, quite complex with, uh, you know, complex uh, uh, physical flows, but also complex uh, regulatory flows, and and who uh, uh, manage goods that that can be subject to compliance measures and and, and, and issues. But uh, there's also a way, you know, any any metal has two sides, and uh, compliance can be a, a threat, but it can also be an opportunity when you look at the uh, tax and fiscal side of things, specifically you know, looking at uh, free trade agreements. So uh, I'm going to hand the, the, uh, the floor over here to, uh, uh, to Lucas Avink for his presentation. Lucas? <clears throat> Thank you, Paul, for your introduction. And uh, welcome, uh, everyone. I feel the pressure upon me. Uh, me standing in between your cocktail after this presentation. So, um, welcome. Just to uh, give you a uh, overview of uh, the topics that we will be addressing in this uh, uh, session. Um, first, I would like to kick off with a small introduction about classification, free trade agreements, and restricted party screening. So, what do we mean with that, and how does that fit in the uh, uh, operations of the customers that we serve with our solutions. Then we make the bridge to the solutions that we provide to the market at Descartes, being uh, the global trade content files. Then CI reference, which stands for Customs Info Reference, Customs Info Manager, and MK Denial, uh, a tool that can help you uh, screen uh, against uh, restricted uh, parties. Uh, and finally, also some closing remarks about the uh, partnerships that we have established with uh, uh, quite important, uh, important partners from us uh, being SAP and Oracle. <clears throat> so, let's start with a small introduction about these topics. So, what do we mean? my classification and free trade agreements. So um, most likely you know about this, but there is a, a HTS uh, uh, schedule, harmonized uh, tariff schedule, or HS codes, they are also referred to. So basically that means that when you're importing, exporting your goods, you need to classify the, the items against numerical uh, codes assigned to the products. Uh, to making sure that you're compliant with uh, the rules and regulations for also uh, um, uh, uh, reporting on, on, on the duties uh, for, for importing these, uh, these items. Um, by doing so, you can also have a look and this. It, it's not only about compliance. It is also like uh, what Paul uh, referred to. Um, it's also, also about uh, taking the opportunity to see whether you can minimize uh, uh, duty spent, of course, by making optimum use of uh, free trade agreements that are in use. Um, so that's a little bit on the classification and free trade agreement uh, side of uh, this story. Uh, then the, the bottom part um, explains a little bit about the restricted party screening. Um, so I, I guess that everyone knows that uh, there are plenty of uh, um, uh, blacklisted uh, countries or organizations or persons that you're not supposed to do any business uh, with. Um, and there are thousands of these source files floating around in, uh, on the globe in, in, in several countries and continents and organizations. And so how do you manage all of uh, these data sources, bring them together, and make sure that you're not doing business with uh, any of these uh, 
parties that are actually restricted because, as I will demonstrate later on, the penalties can be quite severe if you if you do so and uh, 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 you're not compliant with these uh, rules. So, and well, it, it, it's all maybe a little bit of a dusty uh, uh, topic, this, but uh, it is actually quite hot because if you look at some of the the, the press releases uh, from the last weeks. You can see that uh, around NAFTA, of course, we have uh, Donald uh, Trump being very uh, active, saying that uh, the uh, North American Free Trade Agreement uh, has been the worst trade deal ever signed by the U.S., and that he's looking into uh, um, yeah, renegotiating uh, these uh, trade agreements. Then, uh, more specific to, to Europe, uh, uh, this uh, same Mr. Trump and, and his administration has uh, announced that they will impose 25% uh, tariff on steel and 10% on uh, aluminium imports from Canada, Mexico and also the EU. And in response to that, and that is uh, I believe the news from uh, last week, the EU uh, announced that, uh, they, that they feel that this is uh, false uh, protective uh, uh, protectorship uh, being done by the US and that they're actually preparing for extra import tariffs uh, on products imported from the US, effective as from July. And then we also have the Brexit coming up and I already heard in the other sessions that, uh, of course, this is also a whole topic on uh, some of the other areas that we have discussed today, but uh, especially also on the global trade uh, compliance part, uh, this uh, will have an effect as the UK will be uh, renegotiating on any of the free trade agreements or trade agreements that they have with other countries. So yeah, it is a uh, kind of a hot topic. <clears throat> So why why should you care about this? So for one, uh, ensure that you are compliant with latest rules and regulations, and it is quite hard to stay on top of all these developments if you do not have uh, the good solutions in place for that. Two, uh, of course, prevent uh, you from uh, getting uh, penalties uh, by not being compliant and free, and that is the opportunity side of this story is to uh, reduce the import duties by making optimum use of the uh, trade agreements uh, that, uh, that are uh, available. <clears throat> so going a little bit more into the classification part of this story, um, it, is, it is really one of the most highly scrutinized areas in customs audit. And that is because of the subjective nature of it. It is, it is not that much about being right or wrong, did you classify right or wrong, but it is more about you being able to demonstrate that you you have done a reasonable care in determining the, the right uh, HS uh, uh, classifications. And just to give you an example of, of, of how difficult or how complex that can be and what the issue, well one of these issues is uh, about this uh, topic is uh, uh, because of the subjective uh, nature of this uh, exercise um, and technology uh, of course uh, uh, moving ahead, um, you can see here a screen of a uh, video recorder that uh, um, it's a speaker, but at the same time it is a playback device. And if you look up uh, uh, how this should be classified, you actually have two options. So if you register it against a, as a speaker uh, with the related item code to it, then you will have to pay uh, close to 5% duty over it. However, if you classify it as a playback device, which it is, to some extent, then there is a 0% duty rate uh, attached to it. So if you multiply this by thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands of items uh, that you are importing, then uh, of course you can see uh, that the return on investment uh, can be made uh, quite rapidly. Um, and then on the restricted party screening uh, side of, of, the, uh, of the story, um, as a shipper or a manufacturer, uh, it is your responsibility to ensure that you are not doing any business with um, customers, contractors, or suppliers, or a a any kind of party, actually, 
uh, whether it being a country, an organization, or a person um, that is uh, um, somewhere listed as a restricted uh, party and, and defines and, and penalties for doing business with these uh, people or companies are quite significant and I've uh, uh, prepared some uh, examples of that in, in the next slides. So, and this is a, a little bit uh, with a little uh, font uh, uh, text here, but you can see that uh, back in 2009, uh, the AOI uh, company got a fine for over 400,000 US dollar, and at the same time also another example of DHL. In, back in 2009, they, they actually uh, uh, reached an agreement for a uh, uh, close to 9.5 million settlement for not having really applied proper uh, um, screening on the denied parties. So, high penalties uh, uh, on the denied party screening uh, side of the story. And I think with the previous example that I gave about the, uh, the, uh, the video device, the playback device, uh, quite some opportunity also to, to save some money. The challenge, um, however, that we see that uh, some of uh, our customers are facing is um, that there is not one single source of information that you can rely to and that you can easily research in. So um, uh, that, that makes it very tough because there are literally thousands of source files uh, floating around that you need to combine and, and, uh, um, and, and bring together in order to, to do a, a proper uh, screening um, and to have a clear overview of, your, uh, of what your possibilities are related to free trade agreements and making optimum use of it. Um, and then next to that also, and that is again the example of the uh, video device, new technologies uh, complicate item classifications and it is a subjective uh, 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 exercise that needs to be performed. So what are the Descartes solutions that we bring uh, to our customers to help overcome this uh, difficult uh, task? <coughs> in uh, in uh, in general, we at Descartes categorize it in three different categories. So uh, from the top, um, we have the data mine uh, solution. So the data mine solution is basically a database that uh, captures all of the, the bill of ladings of the imports uh, and all of the content of these bill of ladings as well uh, that can then be used to do all kinds of analysis to see uh, how the different markets are developing, what goods are being imported, exported, to which, which kind of companies in which markets and, and what the trends are. So by making use of these uh, um, data files and, and, and the reporting possibilities, you can get a clever insight into the latest market uh, developments. And on the second uh, uh, um, part is the customs info uh, uh, solution suite being managed, uh, being mentioned, sorry. So that is where you can analyze the duty, the taxes, and the preferential trade agreements, and you can do your HS uh, classification and uh, to make sure that you're being uh, compliant and uh, that you classify your items uh, properly, and more importantly, that you can demonstrate that uh, you, you did your best in classifying the items uh, to the best of your knowledge. And then at the, at the bottom of the slide, you can see the MK denied party screening, uh, um, solution suite where you can screen against uh, many of uh, restricted party uh, lists that are floating around to making sure that you're not doing business with any training partners that you're not supposed to do any business with. So how do these solutions fit in or could they fit in your uh, landscape possibly? Um, let me go back to the previous slide. This one. So, um, it's automatically changing and it skips it. So, 
on the top you can see the, the in-house systems that you might be um, using internally and um, that can be your uh, global trade management system if you're using SAP GTS or Oracle GTM. Um, it can also uh, connect to uh, any other back office system uh, that you're using as an ERP or a WMS. It can connect to your TMS system uh, uh, with any of the trading partner uh, systems and, and uh, also with e-commerce platforms that you might be using and especially with e-commerce uh, 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 customers and parties taking uh, uh, placing orders with you online it is of the utmost importance that you can uh, do a timely screening um, of these uh, parties that are placing these orders with you to making sure that you're not doing business with uh, any restricted uh, parties then in the middle part you can see an overview of some of the solutions that are out there uh, um, that, that we bring to market to our customers um, and um, they, they are really focused around some of the topics that I just explained to you so um, that is uh, mostly the, the, the uh, um, classification of items have a look at the import and export tariffs uh, um, and uh, and then in the end that uh, that uh, uh, solution can help you uh, get a better overview and see what kind of missed opportunities you might have uh, for uh, paying the, the duties uh, um, that you're doing at that point in time. So if you look at the Descartes Customs Info Solutions, I just picked out two of them. There are five more that, uh, that you can pick from because we have got a, a, a best fit to, to any of the company or complexity uh, of uh, the, the customers uh, that we are serving. So you have the CI Reference Solution, which holds a, a database with uh, over six million source files where it, it, it is a online subscription service where you can classify your items uh, including uh, ECCN so uh, export control uh, uh, numbers and you can establish a proof that you have uh, 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 done your reasonable care in uh, classifying your items uh, carefully. Then the Descartes Customs Info Manager um, that is a uh, another solution that is out there it's a SaaS solution um, uh, very uh, uh, user friendly um, and it is a role based classification workbench including a workflow that enables different departments or different people within your departments to work together in determining the best uh, classifications. Going to the next slide now. Now we have the uh, denied MK denial uh, uh, solution. So um, in this solution, the user can uh, search against multiple lists, and again, these these are not uh, a couple of uh, hundred, but really literally thousands of uh, documents that can be uh, screened against uh, simultaneously using a single or multiple fields to quickly locate denied party screenings uh, related information that best applies to an uh, industry or a type of uh, export. So here you can do your manual search and type in a name of a person or a company or um, uh, any other uh, kind of organization that you would like to screen against. Um, on top of that, uh, um, and that is on the bottom of the slide, you can see that we also provide a uh, dynamic screening service that can be included to screen records proactively when a new export item is added or following changes to a denied party screening list uh, 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 being applied. So, <clears throat> and I just picked out a handful of the solutions that uh, we uh, make available to our customers and I would like to invite you to please uh, um, have a look at our website www.descartes.com uh, there you can find some documents, some useful documents. Uh, one document uh, is the uh, uh, general brochure that describes uh, all of the HS codes that uh, we provide, all of the free trade agreements, all of the denied party uh, lists that uh, you can screen again so you can get a clear overview. 
Um, and uh, there you can also find some more in detail information around the different subscription packages and, and uh, uh, web services that we uh, uh, provide uh, to our customers when they relate to uh, denied party screening or uh, HS code uh, classifications. Then um, the, uh, the content files that we can make available to basically any system, uh, um, we also um, have done an additional job on that and we made them uh, uh, perfectly uh, formatted for um, Oracle GTM. So on the Oracle GTM uh, system, uh, there we have got a close collaboration with Oracle and all of the files are seamlessly, uh, can be seamlessly uh, uploaded into the Oracle GTM system uh, without you having to do any integration work. And in the slide you can see that the, the, the library of, uh, 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 of content files is uh, quite uh, impressive. And actually the same goes for SAP uh, GTS. I mean, we, we do not uh, uh, take sides on any ERP vendor or a consulting firm for that matter. Um, we simply provide the content and in the case of Oracle GTM and SAP GTS, we, uh, we are doing our extra job to, uh, to making sure that uh, all of our uh, content files can be uploaded uh, without any additional integration work uh, into these uh, systems. Then I would just like to close off with a brief summary and then I uh, can take some questions. So <clears throat> why do we feel that uh, we are actually uh, quite a good uh, partner to uh, consider um, uh, when you're looking at a solution for global trade content? Um, obviously, we are a global leading trade content supplier. We have uh, our solutions uh, are not developed yesterday. Uh, we do this for many of years. They, those are proven solutions used by thousands of customers worldwide. Um, we have got close collaborationships with uh, some of the leading consulting firms like uh, Deloitte, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and any of the other uh, big ones. Um, we, we feel that our uh, library of content files is uh, one of the most comprehensive libraries uh, out there on the market, so it has a great coverage. In case you're using SAP GTS or Oracle uh, uh, GTM, uh, we can provide you with these content files in the format they can, uh, that they're ready to use uh, uh, as from the moment that we can make them available to you. Um, if you're not using SAP GTS or Oracle GTM, then uh, we can also provide you with some uh, easy-to-use web-based solutions. Um, basically, we're saying we have got a wide variety of service offerings to meeting your requirements, whether you're using Oracle GTM, SAP GTS, uh, if, if you're a big multinational or maybe a small e-commerce player, but you still need to uh, comply, we have got a, a solution out there for you that will meet your requirements. And all of these solutions are developed, maintained, and supported by Descartes. <clears throat> 